Praise the Lord. Good Praise morning. the Lord. Good morning, all. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us this morning. Amen. Amen. <laughs> man, oh man, God is so good. He's Amen. Awesome. Amen. You know what? God is growing us up and God is preparing us, if yes, you will, he is. to walk in his greatest destiny and blessing. But yet, even though we know this is the greatest hour, we're, we're, we're on the verge of the greatest hour of the church, we must still maintain our humility Amen. and walk in it with the faith of God. So that's what we're going to talk about this week, if you will, uh, humility and faith. Amen. Let's go to the throne. Hallelujah. Heavenly Father, Lord, we just praise you. We magnify you, Lord. We thank you for your grace. We yes. thank you for your mercy. I ask, Lord that you would empower us, Lord, with your word, that your word would illuminate us, Heavenly Father, Lord, that we would magnify you, glorify you, Heavenly Father, Lord, that you would have your way in every dimension of our lives. In Jesus' name we pray, and the church said, Amen. Amen. Everybody, we're the church, right? Amen. We, the body of Christ, we're the church. Amen. Go with me real quick to Luke, the ninth chapter, and the 23rd verse. Let's back up to the 22nd. Saying, the Son of Man must suffer many things and be rejected of the elders and the chief priests and scribes and be slain and be raised from raised on the third day. And he said unto them, if any man will come after me, let him deny himself yes. and take up his cross daily and follow me. Every day. Every day, you know, Amen. we got to come to that place. And following is more than just pursuing or trying to chase. Exactly. It is obeying. Amen. Isaiah 119 says that if you would be willing and obedient, you will eat the fat of the land. There's a blessing for our obedience. You know what I mean? But God wants us to, that's just it. You got to be willing. You got to be willing and obedient. And not only that, but then in order to deny yourself, you got to be willing. Come on, and you got to be obedient. obedient. Amen. Amen. And being willing and obedient is an action. Amen. Uh, mm -hmm. it, that just doesn't say, okay, I said I'm going to be willing. I'm going to be obedient. It's an action. You need to put some action to what uh, you're willing to do. And that takes faith. Amen. And so God wants us to move out in faith. And be willing. God knows your heart. You know what I mean? Man looks on the outside, but God looks on the inside. He knows your heart. He knows what your real thoughts and, and my uh, emotions are. Uh, and so it's important that we realize that God is saying, okay, come on. I need you to do something. I need you to put some action to what you are saying, to what you are believing. And that means uh, the way we live our lives, the way we do the things that we do, it's a choice. And we have to choose to be obedient. Amen? We choose to be obedient. And as we choose to be obedient, we need to understand that humility and faith, they go together. Come on. It's like water and the wet. You can't have one without the other. Amen. But one is not the other. Water is not the wet, but the wet is not the water. Right? But you can't have one without the other, Amen. and you can't separate them. But we must, we must, if you will, um, continue to press in and continue Amen. to let the Lord be glorified as we as we move forward. And let's look at, if you will, uh, in Mark, the fourth chapter, when Jesus had been teaching his disciples on on faith. Come on. He'd been talking to them, talking about the mustard seed of faith, pouring into them. Not only that, but he knew that he had lived the life of faith, that in everything he did, he taught them, you know, through his actions and his words Amen. about faith and humility. So here we find that Jesus told his disciples, Come let's on. go to the other side, yeah. right? Yes. And when he said, let's go to the other side, they took him because he'd been preaching and teaching. So they took him as he was. So he was probably tired, wore out. They took him and he went down, he laid down in the ship and went to sleep. And immediately, you know, you know, as they got over in, in the middle of the, of, of the sea, the water began to flow and began to crash into the ship and began to fill the ship. Yes. And they woke Jesus up and, 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 and they, you know, he said, why are you so fearful? He began to say, you know, he began to challenge them. Where is your faith? That's right. He inquired, he inquired of them. Where are you at? 
Do you not trust me? Where's your faith? They begin to panic because as the wind and the waves begin to hit the ship, they begin to think, oh, first thing they're thinking, we're in trouble, we're going to die. Who's going to save us? How are we going to be okay? And that's what happens to us. The moment something happens, we begin to go back and forth. We begin to not be sure of the very thing we're supposed to be standing on. Amen. The very thing we're supposed to be trusting on. The very thing we're supposed to uh, be walking in and in our faith uh, gets twisted and we begin to go back and forth at the moment we feel some kind of trouble. Well, God wants us to stand and know that he is going to take care of us regardless to what is going on. And so he began to question and inquire about where is your faith? And that's what we have to ask ourselves. Where is my faith? When this is going on, where's my faith? What am I doing? Whatever I'm dealing with, why am I feeling this way? Why am I questioning God? The first thing we do is, is question God. And the last thing we do is go back to him because he's the one that's going to fix it. And so right at that point, uh, when there's trouble, we have to check ourselves and we have to become humble in that situation. And we have to say, God, we need you more than anything instead of deciding to do things on our own. Amen. Instead of fighting the fight against ourselves in our own minds, we need to say, God, we need you. So we need to understand that when Jesus woke up and he challenged the disciples, Amen. you know, it, it rebuking them, if you will, because they, he knew it wasn't a foreign concept to That's them, right. but it was now to uh, what? Click the app. It was a now to apply what they had learned. Amen. Have applied learning. Right. But they didn't want to apply it. And so once again, what did he do? He gave them an illustration. He yes, spoke he to the wind and spoke to the sea. And guess what? They obeyed. That's right. Immediately it obeyed. Well, you know, we have to ask ourselves, why don't those things happen when we do it? We should be able to get the word of God says a greater things what we do than he did. And so we should be able to speak those things and have things happen. But we don't because we question ourselves in our mind and we question God and we question the word of God. The word of God is sovereign and it is solid. It is God's word. And we're supposed to stand on it in faith and just walk. And God will take care of the rest. But we get stopped and we get stuck because we are not following what God says to do according to his word. Because what happens is our own thoughts and our own situations and our own uh, things come up and we follow after that. Or we allow it to move us away from that direction of what God has called us to. Lastly, remember this. If the wind and the waves should obey him, come on. simply, why don't you? Why don't we? Amen. We'll see you next time at 7 for 7. Have a blessed day.